guys. Oh, just when I'm talking, my dog starts barking. I hope you all are having a really good um, beginning of the week. It's a Monday, and I have one week left before I go back to work. One week. Summer is it's almost history. I'm, I have mixed feelings about that. I'm kind of um, anxious to get back to a routine and, um, and not so much chaos in, in my life. I like, I would go from being extremely busy to nothing to do, but part of me kind of likes being at home because things have kind of sort of mellowed out a little bit, just a little. So, uh, what has what has been going on since the last time you saw me? Um, well, my sister came, and she was here for the week and a half. She actually left on a Friday instead of. They only bark when I do this. Um, she and she left in on a Friday instead of a Saturday, because her husband took the day off and came and got her like extremely early. Oh my gosh! Seriously, are you kidding me? There's nothing out there. Um, yeah, he got here like 7.30 in the morning. We weren't sure how the traffic was going to be with the um, solar eclipse. And we live in Salem, Oregon. I sat right outside, my husband and I sat right outside our deck uh, with coffee in the morning and we watched the whole thing with our glasses. Everybody's like flying in, driving in, RVing, the whole bit. And we just set out, stepped outside with our coffee and watched the whole thing. And it was pretty incredible. Um, we have a thermometer where the, um, the reader, whatever it is, <laughs> I don't know, uh, is mounted to our deck. And then the digital part is in our house. And my son brought it out and we watched the temperature outside drop six degrees. It was pretty amazing. The whole thing was amazing. But um, my brother-in-law came and got my sister home before all of that hit on Monday. Um, and she got all settled. And she had a doctor's appointment, and I had my two meetings for work. So it worked out pretty well. But uh, we had a good visit, and she shops a lot. I, I had to learn patience, and that was really hard for me because not with her, specifically but like I'm one of these people I go in a grocery store right I get the cart if I could put a motor on that cart and I could be in and out in 15 minutes for my whole week's shopping I will do that so like I would be grocery shopping and I got my hands on that cart and I got my list and I'm gone and then pretty soon my phone rings and I answer and it's my sister and that's when I turn around and realize she's not with me she's like on aisle two <laughs> she she stops at every little thing and she's like, where are you? Um, like, I'm in the middle of the store. Where are you? <laughs> My grocery cart's half full. And she just, she's just like, why do you go so fast? Why do you go so slow? So we, we are so opposite. Like, I could run into Walmart to get two items and we will leave like 45 minutes later. And I'm just, just telling myself, patience have patience it's summer it's okay it's gonna take how long it's gonna take um, so yeah that was an experience but the visit you know we laughed and joked and watched TV and I don't have my movies with me but there's two movies that we watch every time she comes and stays with me and that's Sandra Bullock and Bill Paxson oh, I always forget his last name uh, while you were sleeping yes it's a chick flick what we call a chick flick and then Harrison Ford and I cannot remember her name to save my life not the first or the last name but Sabrina and it wasn't one of his uh, Harrison Ford's um, what they said best movies but we love it we do not get tired of it like when we started watching it it was on VHS and my VHS of those movies um, kicked the bucket. My VHS kicked the bucket. And we got blue. We had a Blu-ray player. Anyhow, oh my goodness, seriously, interrupting me. 
Um, and so I bought those on DVD. So we are still watching them. And it feels really st strange anytime I pull those out and she's not here to watch it with me. So, you know, we had a really, really good time. And I was really glad that she was here because um, <clears throat> she was here when I took Rico in for his checkup for his lungs because the last you had heard, um, little Rico here, our dog, uh, had to be put in the oxygen chamber thing. Um, because of the fluid in his lungs because he struggles with that so I was taking him back to get his checkup from that and um, his lungs sounded great um, his trachea was open so all of that was good we found out that it was chances were it was all of the um, contaminated air um, pollu the pollution in the air that has to do with the forest fires um, we are getting smoke from the uh, fires in Canada and then over in Sisters, it's really bad. Like you go outside now um, and you can just smell it and it's hazy. So he's kind of struggling um, a little bit right now. But I'm trying to keep him in and uh, keep a close eye on him. And he's doing not as bad um, because we adjusted his medication with all of this. But while we were there, we had... Um, our vet look at this lump that my husband found on his on his throat and so he took a sample of it and we sent it had it sent to the lab because when he looked at it under his microscope he said I just don't like the looks of it well my sister was here when I got the phone call um, he was not in but other vets at his clinic was in and one of them called me to tell me that Rico did have cancer and it, it is a tumor and I just remember I was on the bed and my my mind was reeling you know and and I'm just like devastated I've been fighting for this dog's health um, since we got him since you know because he's a rescue and we finally got his health under control and then this happens and it's like on his throat and it's his breathing that he has trouble with it's like of all places you have to be it has to be on his throat really does this really have to happen and so I finally I got off of the phone with the the vet because I said I'll be there you know I'll bring him in um, <clears throat> And I just started to cry and I just like I got off the phone with her because I was crying and I just laid on the bed and just was sobbing and I was crying over him and my sister just came in and she was bringing coffee because it was early in the morning and she brings coffee to me every morning with her coffee and we sit there and talk and um, she looks at me and she sees me sobbing because we were both waiting for the phone call for the test results and she walked she walked in and looked at me and she said it's cancer it's cancer isn't it and I just shook my head yes and she just put the coffee down she came over and grabbed my hand and put her other hand on Rico and she just prayed and that was huge because when my sister went in four years ago I think it was about four years ago uh, to get her test results she sat down and looked at the doctor and the look on the doctor's face and she said the exact same words it's cancer isn't it so of all the people that was here was one that fought cancer not once but twice um, and she uh, is lucky to be here both times so you know I got the call from her that she got cancer and then roughly four years later I get a call that my dog has cancer so it's just you know it's just the ugliest word you could ever hear the ugliest word you could ever hear on face planet it's pretty bad and when I when I get a call twice three times I'm sorry three times because my sister called me twice in the in the span of she's been in remission for two years so in the span of two years she called me twice so um, it, it's been difficult it's been very very difficult but um, where we're at now with that I don't mean to take so long um, but I know there's a lot of you that have doggies and you love your your doggies and they're your family they're my family they're a part of my family um, but it's just the tumor it's the type they said um, that generally does not spread it doesn't travel 
and if it doesn't um, enlarge, he could actually go for like several years and survive and have a healthy life. Um, and it should not bother him much. You know, he'll feel a little pressure, but because of his health, because he's a senior and we don't really know how old he is, um, he's between 11 and 14 now because we've had him for a year. Uh, it's just, it, it's pretty dangerous surgery. Anyhow, to remove that, where all the, your, your um, arteries and veins and all that are, and then to have a high risk, if we could avoid it, we will. Well, the last day or two, he's been struggling, but I don't know if it's from that, because I keep thinking it's getting larger. So my husband's coming home, and, and in the morning he's going to feel it, because he's like, you're mom, you're, you're mom, and you're like paranoid, like, is it bigger? Is it getting larger? I think it's getting larger, because you're feeling it too many times. And I'm like so paranoid. So, you know, it could be the bad quality of air we have. And I just need to, like, I just need to breathe. <laughs> need to breathe through this. Um, we just, you know, we just want the best for this little guy. We know he had a rough life. He, Like I've said several times, he shows signs of being abused. And he just deserves to just live through what uh, years he has left as peaceful as possible so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna say it i'm really pissed off i'm really pissed off at this tumor for showing up where it did for showing up at all but then to turn around and show up where it did it's like really so i'm going to shut up about all that um yeah and he's he's right here when he settles down he's in the house and he's sleeping he breathes perfectly fine so occasionally you may hear a snore because he does snore. He sleeps with his eyes open and he snores. And I'm sure you have heard him, if not Charlie, many times in the back of the video. I'm sure you have. So I am going to show you what I have stitched on. I'm going to bend down. And Louis, Louis Ferd, Sir King Louis was on my board. Um, I will show you what cross stitch I have been working on and a few other plans and then that should be about it I think that should be I am going to show you I don't judge me don't judge me for my corners okay I have an almost FFO I am very close I just Sorry guys, uh, my frame dropped and um, for whatever reason, I don't know why my phone shuts off like that, and I went and got my dog in the house and shut the dog door. <laughs> and as you can see, it's dark now because uh, my dinner was done and so I went ahead and ate that before it got cold. So I'm back and I think I was at the point where I was showing you my really bad cornered pillow that I'm almost done with. So I need to work on this. I don't know what's going on, but I can't get it um, to look like this one. Um, I don't know how much I showed you. I don't know if I showed, I don't think I showed it to you at all. So yeah, I finished my sunflower and it looked really cute. Um, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with it and just decided to just stuff it. And I'm probably going to prop it up on the fireplace or somewhere. I don't know. Um, but I just love the ladybugs. And I did the French knots instead of the beads because um, I tried the beads and just decided I didn't like the looks of it with this. So I just went ahead and did French knots. And with this here, <clears throat> I'm trying not to lose my voice. I uh, I did different sizes so like I would wrap wrap the the floss around my needle three times some of them I would do once some of them I did twice just to kind of give it different sizes look a little more realistic I guess I don't know so I'm gonna work on this corner and then just pin stitch pin stitch I guess is what you call it I'm not a sewer uh, 
this closed and I'm done so yeah I've got a few more I want to finish too I have yet to finish my doggy that I stitched a long time ago and a couple other things so there's that and that is my only complete finished project I have this has been done for a little bit I just need to um, what do I need to do? I just need to beat it. But it got put off to the side when my sister came because I've never beat it before and I want to make sure I beat it right. I hope my dog doesn't knock into the chair. But uh, it looks a little wonky and it's because of the way I have it on this um, hoop. So yeah. I, I, uh, I am hoping to start the white one tomorrow. I've been wanting to start. I, I almost started when my sister was here. But I just decided to pick up the sunflower because it was easy to pick up and put down, pick up and put down. And, and that's what I ended up doing a few times. Uh, and this here, you kind of want to concentrate on it. Trust me, you want to concentrate on it. I'm sure Ingeborg is done. I'm sure she's got the, the, I know she's got this one done. I bet you she's got the white one done. I bet it's hanging on her scissors. I'm pretty pathetic. I really am. Okay. Yeah. I was working on this for the last few days. I'll even take this in my bedroom and stitch on it. Uh, the last half of this month has just been whatever I felt like stitching on, especially since I knew my sister was coming. And so I just continued to go with it since she's left. And so since the sunflower is done, I really wanted to uh, give this a lot of love so I could get it finished before the winter hits. So I'm working in this section here. I'm very, very close to the house. Very close. So I'll probably take this into the bedroom with me uh, later. I am going to stitch for about an hour on Hazel. Uh, had my physical therapy appointment with my friend. We both went together and we stopped for our lunch. Uh, just get out of the house and, uh, well, for her to get out of the house. She's retired with her husband. And um, we just take our time. And when I got home, I had some things to do and errands to run and I'm just kind of tired. It kind of takes a lot out of me when he manipulates my back, but oh, it feels so much better. It is worth going. All right. I've also been working on this. No, it's not done. It's not done. I can't show you the whole thing because I really was not prepared. And I do not have their names um, blocked off, you know. But it's the wedding sampler. So this is the top of the border completely done. All I have is border work. And this is 28 count. So unfortunately... How did I do that? Um, how was I showing this to you? Oh my goodness, I don't even know. I um, I need my light, my stitchy light. Can you kind of see here? For 28 count, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my goodness. Friend, get your head together. There we go. That's how I want to do it. I'm doing this side here. So I have all of this part done on all four sides, all the pink done. And so what I decide to do from here on out is just take one side, do the white, and then start up again, and then do the little, whatever that is, stems or whatever. And then I'll have this side done. And then one more short side, one more long side, and I'm finally done. Do you know if, it's okay to give a wedding sampler to a couple's first anniversary because, like, this is taking me that long. Oh, I'm going to tap my screen.
my phone's about ready to die. Maybe that's why it kicked me off. So I better hurry. Then I worked on my classic Christmas charm, you know, and I'm using this as my monthly magazine stitch along, and it's June, July, August. <clears throat> and I have June completed And July needs some love. I got a little bit of stitching done on that. And then I stopped to do August because I picked this up like... When did I pick this up? About a week ago. And it's... What did I say? Three days, three days left of the month. Now, since Monday's almost done. And... Um, yeah, it, I, I need to give it a little bit more love, too, in here. So, but yeah, this one is completely done. Oh, and I went back and watched Carolyn Mazio's uh, tutorial. Please don't thump into the, into the chair. Um, on, I can't remember what this is called, pin stitch? I'm not sure. Where you just stitch um, one cross stitch and then you finish it. And then you move on to the next one so you don't have um, floss trailing in the back. And that was so super easy. She does wonderful, wonderful tutorials. I really miss her. I really wish she would come back. I don't even see her on Instagram anymore. But I'm going to work on that a little bit over the next couple days too. Before September shows up. And that's it. That's all the stitching that I did. Um, you know, a good half of the month was spent with the sunflower, and I didn't even pick it up every day. Uh, so my, my haul, of course, everybody got this. This, I think, is my last magazine. Um, I did not renew it, and I may kick myself for it. I did find a few things that are super cute, but for the last like three magazines or so, I never didn't find hardly any. And I think also I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with all the projects. If you saw all the magazines I have and all the little tabs, I think I was starting to feel overwhelmed. I didn't even, I, I ended up not um, renewing my cross stitch gold. I don't know, I may really regret that one. Okay, I'm going to show you my haul. <clears throat> Not much of it at all. So I got my Brenda's Miners and More August um, grind guard. And I got a small one because I got a bunch of small hoops for little projects that I do have down I want to do. And with little hoops, you touch the fabric a lot. It's pretty unavoidable. So I wanted to get one. And then this is my needle minder of the month. That's really pretty. It's gorgeous. Then I saw this fabric on her Facebook page and had her make me a grime guard out of that. I know it's supposed to be scary, but come on. You know that's cute. That's adorable. So that's my haul. I did purchase... Oh couple of uh, rings I think I do have one and I don't even know where I got it because normally I don't use rings but my plan is to give it a try and see that's why I only got two to take my little baggies and punch holes and put them on the ring so I can just grab the whole thing and see how well that works uh, because I'll have them and I will have them in my lap and I'm especially some projects that I have when I've got like a whole wad of colors and I'm flipping through trying to find the right colors and they may slip out of my hands and when I have two or three dogs on my lap 
yeah with my cross stitch it definitely gets um lint brushed when i'm done uh then they end up on the floor and i can't grab them so if i could just put them on a ring i'm thinking and then they all stay together i think it might be easier we'll see and if it works really well i'm just going to get them on amazon because i can get like a whole bunch of them i think it's like 50 or something for 10 bucks okay <clears throat> that was no i have one more haul i'm gonna sit all this down this is the last thing i got i got this yesterday i had a coupon for joanne fabrics and i paid five bucks for it and i'm sure some of you've seen it or maybe have it it's not the best uh bead storage in the world um, and I only say that because they're hooked together they're not individual so <clears throat> if you want in here you gotta take you know the layers off which is not that big of a deal <clears throat> my problem is labeling them with their numbers because they don't each have their own lid and I don't know if labeling here will make sense because grabbing and pulling, you know, you're going to wear it. But I don't know if labeling on here is going to make sense either. But it may make better sense because you're not grabbing like this. I mean, I'm holding on to it for the video like that. But normally I just grab and, you know not touch this so i'm thinking that might be my better option and just make sure i always put them back where they go which is no big deal but i do not have a lot of beads uh, a lot of mill hill beads uh, i do have more than this the only ones that i have in here is for my scissor fob that i need to bead and i have some that's in a kit that I will probably just put in here because it's probably going to be a while before I stitch that. And then I've got a bunch in my Mill Hill Christmas Village that I've shown you. All those little kits uh, that I'm going to do all on one piece of fabric. And those come with beads. And I have heard several people on their videos say that Mill Hill kits have more beads in it than you need for the project. So you have beads left over. So you want to make sure you have a place for them. Um, I think Vonna Pfeiffer even said that. <clears throat> so I figured even just the beads I got with the kit um, that um, Ingeborg had had uh, done on her giveaway, it all, was all in little pack. And so when I was looking at them and thinking about beading when my sister was here, all the colors were in the palm, and I thought that's not going to work. So when I start beading it, I need to have them in something. So I just sat there and separated them. Put them all in there. So it'll work. It'll work for now. I think it's Stephanie uh, from Miss Also Crafty. She's got a beading, a, be, a bead organizer that I love. And I found it on Amazon. And I have it on my wish list. Right now, I can't justify it, but... I'm really having second thoughts. I'm thinking maybe next month with my um, cross-stitch spend money to just go ahead and get that. <clears throat> because I'm afraid that I may wait too long. Don't we always fear that with cross-stitch? So, let's see. Let's talk about my plan, shall we? So, um, here I am with my son's blanket. So I will be working on this in September, going to the next color. This, the black I'm done, went as far as I want. So starting September, I, uh, September 1st, even though it's a Friday, decided I'm just going to give my first um, project for September a start. Then I'll just work on a little bit on Friday. But I'm doing back to my five dollar five dough five day rotation so I can have my Saturdays and Sundays to do more extra reading and to work on my knitting so I am going to be working on my husband's blanket in that one in September and then I'm going to start um, on a hat for me 
knitting a hat. I've never knitted a hat. I have loomed knitted many hats, but not knitted a hat. And I've been out of practice with my purl stitch. I finally learned how to do it like a year ago and I haven't used it. I haven't used that knowledge. And so I picked a hat that's pretty easy to do. It's on knitting on the round and you do purls and you do knitting. So I really want to do that. And then I want to make a shawl because we're getting into that time of year where um, pretty soon, September, October, it's cool in the mornings, but warm by the time you get off work. And I can't see taking a coat or a jacket. Um, so I'm thinking if I just do one of those, uh, I can just leave it in my car so I can wrap it around my arms when I'm, you know, going to work. So I'm going to be working on that on my knitting. My September plans for reading, I went to the library. And I overdid it. Like I got, uh, I, got I did a bunch of reading when my sister was here because her and I both read Cozy Mysteries. And uh, in the evening, if we weren't watching TV, we were uh, reading. So I kind of got burnt out. So I actually got these like a week ago and I haven't touched them. I tried. I have one with a bookmark on chapter one and like the th third page since this week. So I got to get going on him. Uh, I know I will, I will have to take some of these back. I know I will. But um, that's okay. It's the library. I can, I can check them out again. So I thought I'd show you what I have. So this here, I'm going to put my glasses on. Bookmark for Death, which is a Booktown mystery. Lorna Barrett. This here is like, I think the second, yeah, it is. It's the second one of the series. Try not to rock that. Keeper of the Castle, a haunted home renovation mystery. I think this is like number five or something like that. And this is uh, Juliet Blackwell. And Crime and Poetry, A Magical Bookshop Mystery, Amanda Flower. This is the very first one. Maybe I shouldn't put them on there. It's rocking. Uh, Sour Apples, it's an orchard mystery. Oh, I can't even remember which one this one is. This is like way down there. by Sheila Conley I'll put it there a brew to a kill a coffee house mystery and be quite honest I don't even remember what pay which one this one is 12 I think I read that too fast but I think it's 12 and um, this has got recipes in the back. Cleo Coil. Okay, my phone is really going to die. Cleo Coil, I think that's how you say your last name. And then this is my only non-mystery. It's uh, Nora Roberts, First Impression. I've read many of Nora Roberts. I don't read mis uh, romance very often, uh, but she's got other ones that aren't romance it's like mystical and different things but yeah I thought I'd just grab it to change it up a little bit in case I get a little burnout on mystery so that is my September um plans for reading sorry I'm afraid you should see the get up I have something sitting on a chair I'm I'm waiting for this thing to fall Sorry guys, my phone did fall. It face planted the floor and I really didn't want you to face plant with it. So I'm going to cut that out when I put these three videos together to make one. Um, I thought I would hop on here again just to wrap everything up because I didn't tell you my stitchy plan before my phone fell and 
that's what this is. This is floss tube, right? So I will go ahead and tell you what my stitchy plans are real quick and then I will let you guys get on to some other floss tube videos. There's so many out there. Uh, so on um, the first week of September, I am going to be working on that classic Christmas charm. And uh, I am working on it this week, so it's actually going to get two weeks of attention. And this week is going to be primarily um, trying to get a little bit more of August, the August one done um, for the monthly magazine stitch along. And see how much of July I can get finished also. And then when September comes, I will stitch on it for a week and see if I can get all of those finished and September going too. It would be really nice if I could get all caught up. And then when October gets here, I just have October to stitch because really they're not very big. So we'll see what happens for two weeks. We'll see what happens. Um, and then the second week of the month, I will work on the winter, uh, winter season. And this week I will be putting a little bit of work into it also. Um, with the drop frame and stopping for dinner and being really super tired because I had to get up really early this morning for my trip. Um for my physical therapy I'm like really tired I don't think I could stitch on anything too complicated um, I'm a lot more tired than I realized uh, I have you hooked to the wall right now so that's why I'm kind of leaning this way I'm not trying to take a nap while I'm doing this uh, but my phone had like 3% so I had to do something so yeah I will be working on that winter house off and on this week and then I am going to give it a full week of sep in September to see how much of that I can possibly get done I want to get more finishes um, I've got the sunflower finish under my belt and so that's good but I want some more I want some more finishes um, and then I'm going to be doing the have um, I gonna say heaven and earth uh, why I say that? Uh, I won't be starting one of those for a while. I want to do the Happily Ever After from the Pumpkin Patch Stitchery, I think. It's been so long, I can't remember the name of the company. But, yeah, I'm still in March, and I still have to um, clean up February from when I messed up, and I started frogging. And when I was showing all of you my uh, rotation, or not my rotation, I don't, I can't even talk right now. I'm getting that tired. When I showed you all my whips, and I was really looking at that, you know, I was thinking that, you know, maybe I could get away with not frogging as much as I thought, but I don't know, because I really started the frogging and started the seam ripper, and I tried to be careful, but we'll see what happens. I've got to pull it. When I pull it back out, i got to really look at it. But for that week, I want to get February and March completely done. I'm really hoping and seeing how much of the border I can get done. Since I'm on the edge there, on the other side. And then the last week of September, I am finally pulling out my afghan and getting that bookshop going because I was taking a break in June I I was going to put out in July pull it out in July and start um, working on it I changed shops and so I needed more floss but I kept finding reasons why not to start it and I think I was way more burnt out than I thought I was and I knew I was burnt out but I think I was way more burnt out but I have less shops to stitch than what I have already stitched. So I need to get started on it and I'm ready. So I will be working on that. I think I have like one or two lines on it stitched and that's it. So those are my stitchy plans for the month of September. My book plans and my knitting plans and we shall see. That's a lot. But I'm ready to get back into a routine. 
so hopefully I can do I know I won't be able to read all these books but I know that um, some of this other stuff I should be able to do so we shall see um, we shall see how much time I have this week with uh, going back to work just to get the kitchen put together and the freight see what happens there our kitchen is in chaos I don't remember if I said that or not um, with remodeling and they're not even done there's wires apparently and everything else and tools and stuff not um, finished today and school starts in a week children will be in the building in a week wanting food it's not looking too good people I am actually on call. My boss will call me and let me know when we all show up to help her put everything back together. It's a scary thought, so let's hope for the best. Um, I will see you all back here hopefully in two weeks. I am. Uh, it is Monday, and I'm trying to aim for every Monday at some point. Uh, it seems to work pretty well for me, um, or as close to Monday as possible and uh yeah that's that's all i have to say um thank you all so much for watching me for putting up with all these um drop frames dropped phones it was a great day it really was uh thank you all so much for your comments and and your thumbs up for my videos and uh subscribing to me i really really appreciate it and i really appreciate all of you putting up with my um, inconsistencies of these videos. I always have the best of intentions, but executing them is a total different thing, apparently, when it comes to me. Uh, but, yeah, let's get back on routine. Let's get back to life and see what happens. I hope you all had a wonderful summer. Uh, and try and enjoy the last bit you have left. Uh, it's going to be really, really warm here. Um, we hit 100 today. And it's supposed to stay in the 90s. It's supposed to be crazy warm. Um, and so uh, I hope all of you are safe. I hope, um, oh, you know, my heart goes out so much to everybody in Texas. Oh, I've been seeing the devastation on the news, and I just, I can't imagine. I hope your loved ones are safe if they live there. Um, I would imagine if you live there, you're not watching me. So, um, if you are, I really hope you're safe. And, yeah, that's just, oh, uh, it's just heartbreaking to see that. It's terrifying just wondering what you would do, you know, if you're in that situation. So, my heart really goes out to everybody over there. Um, and anybody in, in the line of the wildfires, it's been crazy. All the fires, like I said at the beginning, all the smoke even coming over here from Canada and Sisters, Oregon has got horrible fires. Um, they always get hit. And, oh, it's just, it's been a bad, it's been a bad last half of um, August for um, natural disasters here and fires and all that. So my heart really goes out to anybody who has um, got family that are in the line of any of this friends or even you yourself so i hope you all stay safe you know be very very careful be very very cautious um around fires and um try and just um hopefully you can just stay close to home and and be safe so i will talk to all of you later um and just take care everyone bye